One of the governing body members of Jehovah's Witnesses, Tony Morris, is quitting. Is, or I, I don't know if he's quitting or if he's been fired or what. But on their website, right here, JW.org, it says, On Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, it was announced at World Headquarters that Brother Anthony Morris III is no longer serving as a member of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, if you're not familiar with the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, it's a total of eight people, well, ten people now, they added two more, who kind of control the lives of everybody. I mean, they dictate policy, they claim to receive divine prophecy from God, the whole nine yards, and they have written policy and doctrine for the, the organization for decades and decades, all of them, basically, right? This is a big deal. Has this ever happened before? To my knowledge, no. There's, okay, there was at least one, Ray Franz, who quit the governing body, realized it was all nonsense, walked away from the organization entirely. Is that what's happening right now? Is Tony Morris, governing body member, leaving the religion? You have no idea how much policy this dude's influenced. Just look at this Caleb and Sophia video from them. They're talking about preparing to go in service, right? They're talking about getting dressed and being cleaned up and all that, and then this happens in the middle of this Caleb and Sophia video. Our clothes fit well, but not too well. What a weird thing to put in a Caleb and Sophia video, huh? That would be weird to hear if you didn't know about Toni Morris's absolute tirade against tight pants. I am dead serious. Listen to what he had to say about tight pants. This is 2015. So it's not that you don't dress nice to fit your physique. That's fine. That's what Max and I do. What's wrong is this extremely tight pants. It's not appropriate for a Christian. And I want you brothers to think about this. Do you remember that many, many, many homosexuals are in the clothing industry and doing the designing? Don't you know they love it when you're wearing tight pants? Oh yeah, you chuckle. I don't think it's funny. I think it's disgusting. No joke, this gets bizarre. This dude's beliefs are so weird and they spread they permeate through all of Jehovah's Witness culture not just in their children's TV show you know Caleb and Sophia talking about tight pants well but not too well but through a billion different ways and it's not just about tight pants either I mean just listen to this video here this is him talking about quote unquote Spanx I'd never heard of Spanx before Tony Morris dude has an unhealthy obsession okay I think this is from November 2014. I have to mention this, something I've observed. I, I see it in the airports, but uh, burly women. Okay, this is... Burly women? Is that what he said? Burly women? Okay. What they do. And it's all... Oh, worldly women. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought he said burly women. I was like, do burly women wear Spanx, quote unquote, more than like other people? I <laughs> all right. Keep listening here. Worldly women. All right. Jerry Ring, but sometimes even some of our sisters now, and I suppose in the probably really lovers of God and such, but you're not thinking of this verse. And, and what it is is this Spanx, the skin tight stuff they wear. Now, I, I had honestly never heard of Spanx before he had used the word specifically. It's honestly a really cringy name for clothing but okay any sisters wearing it in the ministry no i can't say i've ever seen that but when they exercise they leave their home and they're jogging in this stuff scandalous huh look at the verse is that appropriate to wear skin tight spanks or whatever they call it that's not modest and it's certainly not sound of mind they're just leggings, man. Can't people enjoy their lives and just wear the leggings while working out or jogging or whatever? Honestly, what is his obsession? Something happened to him, right? Something went wrong in this guy's life to turn him against tight pants so vehemently. Really not appropriate. There's nothing else to say about it. Now, you want to be in your home or your room and wear that stuff. That's your business. But don't go out in public like that and say you worship the true God. I'm just trying to stay in shape. Uh-uh. 
inappropriate. And the other one that uh, needs addressing is for these young fellas, because the older ones aren't doing much of it, thankfully. Uh, it's the metrosexual look. We've addressed that in the past. We've said things about it. But what's happened now, it's really caught on more. Now, the metrosexual, that's the, the tight suit jacket and the tight pants, uh, better known as tight pants. Okay, tight pants is a term that I have only ever heard out of this guy's mouth, first of all. And second, honestly, who cares? Who cares? What is his obsession with tight pants? You know, to my knowledge, last I talked to my mom, which is years ago, she told me that her favorite governing body member, like celebrity, is Toni Morris. Because she was in Vietnam. My mom was in the Vietnam War. And Toni Morris was in the Vietnam War, too. And honestly, this dude, you can tell that he was in Vietnam because some of the talks he gives about what it what Armageddon's going to be like, all of the fighting is entirely too graphic, entirely too graphic. But it's like he's from an era when men were alphas and didn't wear tight pants. And he has just this deep obsession with the fact that people wear tight pants sometimes. Like what is happening right now? Yeah, people are laughing because this is ridiculous. And uh, they are tight, I mean tight, all the way down to the ankles. And that is not modest, brothers. How is it not modest? No. It's not appropriate. It's not sound of mind. And I was proud of one circuit overseer who told me this past summer at one of the international conventions because he brought it up. One of these fellas shows up for his circuit overseer visit, and he wants to go out to the ministry, work with him door to door, and he's wearing tight pants. And the circuit overseer was man enough, spiritual. Man enough, okay. Spiritual man enough to say, no, I'm not going door to door with you. Mm -mm. That's a big deal. Is this even true? I don't know, but to be denied by a circuit overseer like that, like they're pretty high up in the organization. They're traveling overseers that go from congregation to congregation and appoint elders, delete elders, that kind of thing. It, to be denied like that's a really big deal. Not with that dress on. Inappropriate. So a lot to think about in you elders out there listening in. Uh, and be kind now. We, we always want to try to imitate Christ Jesus. You be spiritual man enough to tell these young fellas, you don't go out in the ministry looking like that. Not in this organization. And frankly, I have asked sister after sister, you know, what do you think of this? Do you find that appealing, attractive? You know, I'm just curious, because I'm not a woman. Uh, I, I don't know why that's funny, but okay. And you know what? I've not met one yet that thought they looked good. Well, <laughs> they're certainly not going to be honest with you. Sexuality is heavily repressed in the uh, Jehovah's Witness religion. They're not going to tell you, yes, I find that other person who is not my husband attractive. No chance in hell. I don't know. You tell me. You, you know what? Let's take a poll. Let's find out. Are tight pants attractive? This is just an off-the-cuff poll with my audience. We're going to find out. Get to the bottom of this. You tell me. Are tight pants attractive? Yes. No. Maybe so. I mean, be honest here, too. I want you guys to be honest about this. Uh, I, wa I really want to know, do you consider tight pants on men, specifically, tight pants on men to be attractive? Would you rather somebody wear tight pants than not? Okay, we're up to 53 votes. Wow. Just kind of a cursory glance here. Looks like my audience, I've got a 60 votes in so far. Uh, most said yes. 44% said yes. And 41% or 25 votes said maybe. Uh, only nine people or 14% said no, tight pants are not attractive. So I think Toni Morris is using anecdotal evidence here that's a little skewed, just saying. On women, yes. On men, no. Okay. This guy is just something else, dude. Honestly, he's something else. So there's your answer. 33 votes said yes, 47%. 39% or 28 votes said maybe. And then 12% uh, 12 or 9 votes said no. All right, let's keep listening to Tony Morris. 
But like I've been telling uh, others, and, and this is a fact, the homosexuals that are designing these clothes, they like you in tight pants. Dude, <laughs> this is so crazy. I love it to death, man. I love listening to this crazy shit come out of his mouth. It It's like, I don't know, what what's the word I'm looking for here? It feeds me. It's like sustenance to me. I This is what I love to do all day, every day, to sit here and listen to Tony Morris say the craziest shit. That's who likes it. Not spiritual people. So, just something to consider with dressing grooming. Is it appropriate? Is it modest? Does it display soundness of mind? If not, do something about it. If you're a spiritual family. So anyways, that was Tony Morris on tight pants. Absolutely absurd, dude. Everything about this guy is absurd. And he's no longer one of the governing body members of Jehovah's Witnesses, fascinatingly. There's a little more that I have from this guy, though. There are a few more clips that I wanted to talk about. The thing about being a governing body member is that you can set doctrine within Jehovah's Witnesses alone. You, one single governing body member, can come along and set doctrine just by saying something. It doesn't get higher up than these people, okay? Here's an example of doctrine that Tony Morris set by saying it, by speaking these words suddenly Every Jehovah's Witness in the world believes it, just like that. Listen to this one. This is uh, 2018. It's uh, January 13th, 2018. So you just take a look, and this is the idea Jehovah's getting across at your hands. And you look at your hands. Now, uh, only God, as he looks at your hands in here and all those that are tied in, does he see blood there? i.e., are you guilty of murder? Uh, or, as Jehovah's Witnesses refer to it, are you blood guilty? That's what they call it. If you have done something that led to the death of another human being, directly or indirectly, you're blood guilty. And it's tantamount to murder in their eyes. The humans sitting next to you, they, they might... The human sitting next to you, okay? <laughs> sitting next to you, they, they might have an idea because they know you well and you haven't been out in service in weeks. There you go. That's the point here. You haven't been in service, which means you haven't gone knocking on doors in weeks. If you haven't gone knocking on doors in weeks, you are guilty. You're blood guilty. You've killed somebody because that person isn't going to make it through Armageddon because you didn't knock on their door to convert them. That is doctrine that he just said. I know, that may have existed slightly before him. I'm not sure. But he's at the very least reinforcing this doctrine. If you don't go in service, you are blood guilty. It's tantamount to murder, and you won't make it through Armageddon if you don't repent for that sin that you've committed. He was setting the serious level at which people should take going and knocking on doors, giving their labor for free to this organization. Well, guess what? Most likely God's seeing some blood all over your hands. Or they go totally inactive, and we appeal to them, we try to help... But you cannot water down what God says here. If your hands are not clean because you've been out warning, then they have blood on them and you're going to lose your life. That's a pretty big deal, the fact that he came out and said that at the time. It was effectively setting doctrine or at the very least reinforcing or fortifying doctrine that was believed at the time. I got a couple more clips for you that I want to show you of Tony Morris and who the guy is uh, to try to illustrate what he believed while he was on the governing body and the types of things that he influenced while he was in the religion. Or while, I'm sorry, he's still in the religion, of my knowledge, while he was a governing body member. God, how f***ing metal would it be if this guy actually left the religion? Oh, I would love that. The governing body members have special quarters in Bethel, like special area on their cult compound that they live in, special room that they and their family stay in. I wonder where he's going to go now. Has he been moved from governing body member to helper? Has he been removed from Bethel entirely? What's he going to do? Well, I'll tell you what he's not going to do. He's not going to go get a job in the outside world. I can't imagine that's going to happen. Certainly not after all the damage he's done to society. 
Listen to this clip. This is him on higher education. I don't know if he got higher education before he joined the religion or not, but he certainly railed against it when he was in it or when he was a governing body member. I'm not sure when this one came out exactly. I think sometime around 2015, but listen to what he said here. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are against education. Well, that's ridiculous. We're not against education. Uh, we are pro-education. It's just that we are selective with who does the educating. Well, that's one way to frame it. What he means is they are anti-college, okay? They are pro you going to the meetings and reading the Bible. They are anti going to college. But he knows exactly what was meant when the word education or higher education was used. That term means going to college. He's just propagandizing. This is a perfect example of it right here. We promote divine education. We believe it to be superior because it leads to everlasting life. So with schools of higher education and many of their curriculums, and if you know anything about it, maybe some of you have been, uh, do they not have philosophy one and philosophy two? I, th I think that depends on the school and the major you, you are going for. It doesn't matter what you're going to major in. And they start you off there. You, you'd be going for another thing, but you, you have philosophy one, you have philosophy two. Just, it depends. That's not necessarily true. And then all of a sudden it gets in there and the intellectual gripping of the mind, uh, very hard to recover from. Well, what a thing to say. Once that logic slips into your head, it's impossible to shake off. Absolutely absurd human being, dude. Absurd human being. My mind is just racing with possibilities of what's going to happen next for this guy and why he was removed in the first place. It's starting to make sense why they added new governing body members. Why two of them, though? I covered this not too long ago. If you want to, like, look at, the, you know, my video history, you'll see I talked about the two new ones, which are Jeffrey Winder and Gage Flegel, I think is his name. They're both, you know... Just as harmful and toxic to society as any of the other governing body members have been. So, this is actually really blowing me away, though, that a, a new governing or that an old governing body member was removed like this. Listen to this. This is Tony Morris's take on apostates. So, Tony Morris was talking, was reading a Bible verse about Gehenna to try to establish the idea that non Jehovah's Witnesses or people that are opposed to the religion specifically. People who have left the religion behind, like me, or people who are critical of the religion or the governing body members will go to Gehenna. That's the context you need to understand this video. So listen to what Tony Morris has to say about Gehenna and apostates, a.k.a. people that just aren't members or left it behind or are critical of it, basically. So the Isaiah Prophecy book mentions that uh, if... As this Jewish scholar suggests, Gehenna was used for the disposal of refuse and carcasses of those deemed unworthy of burial. Fire would be a suitable means of eliminating such refuse. Now this point, what the fire did not consume, the maggots would. Now, I don't know if you know much about maggots, but... Uh, He's talking about apostates right now. He's talking about ex-members or people that are critical of the religion. And he's fantasizing about this happening to me right now. You see a whole bunch of them. It's just not a pleasant sight. But what a fitting picture of the final end of all of God's enemies. Sobering, yet something we look forward to. However, the apostates and the enemies of Jehovah would say, well, that's gruesome, that's despicable. You teach your people these things? Yeah, I would say that. That's absolutely grotesque. No, God teaches his people these things. This and of course, Tony Morris speaks for God, right? He is God's mouthpiece on earth. Well, not anymore, I suppose, since he's not a governing body member. Oh my God, dude, this just blows me away, seriously. And frankly, for friends of Jehovah God, how reassuring that... They're finally going to be gone. All these despicable enemies that have uh, just reproached Jehovah's name, destroyed, never, ever to live again. 
It's talking about me. I've, quote-unquote, reproached Jehovah's name, done something that Tony Morris doesn't like, which is criticize him, and that justifies him wishing death upon me. Now, it's not that we rejoice in someone's death, but when it comes to God's enemies, finally. Now, it's not that we wish death on people, but you're wishing death on people right now. That's what Tony Morris just did. It's not that we wish death on people, but finally. When it comes to God's enemies, finally. But I'll make an exception for the people that I don't like. Just grotesque, dude. It's just wrong. Finally. They're out of the way, especially these despicable apostates who at one point had dedicated their life to God and then they joined forces with Satan, the devil, the chief apostate of, of all time. So he, here what he's doing is not just referring to ex-members. He said especially ex-members, but also people who are critical of the religion but were never members before. So you can be an apostate and had never been a member before. That's possible. To view the world this way in such blacks and whites, to hate an entire group of people that you've never met before to this degree that you don't even know by name, it's just disgusting. So in conclusion, let's go back to that opening psalm that we looked at here. Just to help this verse stay in your mind, we hope, uh, verse 20, just to emphasize this, but the wicked will perish, the enemies of Jehovah will vanish like glorious pastures, particularly they will vanish like smoke. So this, I thought this would be a nice memory aid, to this verse stay in the mind. Here's what Jehovah's promising. Okay. As Jehovah's enemies. That's actually Tony Morris's enemies. That's who this illustration was for. People that he hates. Apostates. Me. He just, in front of an audience of millions, fantasized about my death. About your death. If you're listening to this, you're on the list of Tony Morris's enemies. Just disturbing stuff, dude. Disturbing stuff. This guy is probably the most disturbing and depraved governing body member out there, in my opinion. It doesn't get worse than him. And the fact that he is now gone is crazy to me. It's, it's just crazy. I honestly want to know how other Jehovah's Wit or ex-Jehovah's Witnesses are responding to it. I want to know how Jehovah's Witnesses are going to respond. This is a big deal. Holy Christ on a cracker, dude. Okay, let's just... Take a look. This is the XJW subreddit, r slash XJW. Here it is, breaking. Tony Morris out as governing body member. Announcement. On Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, it was announced at World Headquarters that Tony Morris is no longer serving as a member of the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, according to Newsroom on JW website. Very quick, initial thoughts from ex-Bethelite with zero insider knowledge about this. Take with a pinch of salt. One, wow, this is a long one. Let, let's read what this ex-Bethelite has to say. By the way, Bethel is their cult compound, and they get Jehovah's Witnesses to work it, on the compound. They're called Bethelites, and they are like the holiest of holy people. So apparently this guy worked on the cult compound at one time or another and has like insider knowledge of, of generally how the cult operates at their compound from the inside. So let's see what they have to contribute. One, how the announcement was made is more interesting than the news itself. Bearing in mind this would have been announced at family worship in the morning, this would also just be to try and stop the rumor mill getting out of hand for normal Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses are really bad about gossip. That said, no prepared page or paragraphs talking about how great his service was is interesting. Yeah, usually they would have some kind of a breakdown of, like, he's sick, and he, you know, had to go to the hospital recently and he doesn't feel like he can serve Jehovah to the fullest anymore. So he's being removed. None of that. None of that. It's just he's removed. It seems like it at least caught the website team off guard. Not even a picture. It's a big deal. This is a really big deal. Number two, remember, we have bias to want to, to want this to be bad, but I'm still not jumping to conclusions. 
Could be lots of different things, even if it does seem to be strange as hell and timing with current U.S. situation interesting. Correlation, though, isn't causation. Yeah, I agree. It could be nothing. It could be nothing. Either way, it's a big shakeup to remove a governing body member. Number three, I would love to know how this was announced to the Bethel family and where and when first. Sometimes you can tell when something happened depending on which Bethel announced it first. Morning worship being at 7 a.m. for each Bethel family local time. Also, if this was a long discussion about how great he is in the announcement, or if it was bundled in with the generic announcements, that info would give us way more to work with. Number four, edit one. The announcement says it was announced at World Headquarters, which means that the final decision was likely made last night slash yesterday, and the U.S. Bethel family were first informed today, which is weird because the governing body meeting is on Wednesday morning. So either they waited a week to announce the decision from last week's meeting, or they held a special meeting to decide this. That would make me think more along the lines of the investigation slash committee decision. This also means this morning's governing body meeting was the first one he didn't attend. I'm cautious as hell to speak here, but it really does seem to indicate more wrongdoing slash apostasy not being peaceable than just an old age or sickness situation, which could have been done in a much more respectable way with lots of prep. Yeah, absolutely. And here's number five, edit two. Another thought, we don't know, but because of the way the announcement was made slash wording, it seems likely the other Bethel families found out from this very same announcement and then re-announced at their morning worships. More indication, this is a shock decision for many. We had other big announcements on the website, and the local BC, I'm not sure what that is, didn't know it until it was posted online. Seems likely to be the case here. Let's just look at some of the other comments here. I was waiting for you to give your thoughts. I hope more ex-Bethelites chime in with theirs. Apparently, this guy is well-known as a Bethelite or an ex-Bethelite in the community. I'm not sure. This is four hours ago. I concur with all of what Ben said. I'm a former member of the Patterson-Bethel family. Uh, without knowing how the announcement was read to the Bethel family, there's not enough context to know what the nature of his departure is. If the announcement was worded the same way to the Bethel family as the website announcement... It's likely it's involuntary. Wrongdoing? Tough to say without more details. This is a really big deal, though, in my opinion, that they're just removing him this way. It's nuts. I almost didn't believe it at first since they conveniently buried the lead on the app. Not a whisper of it. I had to go to the website, and it wasn't even on the homepage. Navigate all the way to the newsroom, and there it is. A little snippet wedged between articles with giant cover photos, almost like they don't want us to know. Oh, but you know this is going to spread like wildfire. Every Jehovah's Witness probably already knows. I'd be willing to bet. And this released like four hours ago, basically. I sent every PME, which is somebody who is currently in the religion and currently believes it, Every PME friend and family member I know, the link. I'm physically in, so they're still a member, but they're mentally out. They've woken up. I'm PMO, but no one knows, so I can subtly send this info out without raising suspicion. So nobody knows that they have given up on the belief system. They think that they're still full-blown members. Wow, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Update number two, according to a friend I informed, they asked their elder in our hall about it, and the elder didn't even know. The elders are not even aware that this happened. Well, my whole circuit should know by the end of the week now that I've kicked off the JW gossip train. Now I'll sit back on my work and observe that it was good. That's funny. Um, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses are really, really terrible gossips, I've, I've come to find. They were in my congregation anyways. It seems to me like it's because there's nothing else to do. You know, it, it sucks. Like, you can't have fun. You can't go out and hang out with friends. You can't watch certain TV shows. I mean, there's so much you can't do as a Jehovah's Witness. So you spread gossip. That's the thing to do. Nobody knows, they're saying. Even the official announcement was oddly placed I would think that they would at least announce it, like, at the Kingdom Halls. I just can't believe how this is going. This blows me away, honestly. Okay, here's another person. Quick thoughts. We need to back up every video he's appeared in on JW.org. They're probably already removing stuff. Probably not due to age or infirmity, as he's not the oldest governing body member and appears to have a better grasp of his faculties than, say, Loth. Agreed. Agreed. They still called him Brother Morris, so probably not apostasy. 
Ooh, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that one. They said brother Anthony Morris the third. Yeah, 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 that's true. It's probably not apostasy. We know nothing, and it might be a long time before we know anything. He ha- he was not said to have been disfellowshipped. We have no reason to think he's not a hardcore believer. Unless this involves litigation and info comes out in court, we probably won't know anything until someone in Bethel leaks the deets. So let's not go too crazy with the conspiracy theories. Agreed. I, I-, I agree with that. Holy shit, cannot believe this is happening. And edit. Worth remembering that Ray Franz, who was a governing body member and then left the religion entirely, just quit the governing body, quit Jehovah's Witnesses, and they changed policy to make it so that it was against the rules to talk to him or read anything that he wrote. Then he went, when he left, he wrote a book called Crisis of Conscience that detailed all of the corruption in the governing body. Anyways, Ray Franz was not disfellowshipped instantly upon being removed as a governing body member. He wasn't disfellowshipped at all, to my knowledge. He disassociated himself. He disconnected himself from the organization. He was reassigned out of Bethel and was eventually disfellowshipped from his home congregation, as I recall. Mm, that... I'm not really sure. I, I would have to look that up. I don't I don't know the details of it. Someone else says, yeah, there's no way it was due to age or infirmity. They never remove them from the governing body for that. They just wait until they die and send an announcement about it. Yeah, I think they might be right about that. They still called him Brother Morris. This is a great point. Someone else posted Ray Fran's announcement from 1980, and it doesn't say brother, so good catch. That's super interesting. Oh, my God. I am just blown away by this let me know what you think about this in the comments jehovah's witness ex jehovah's witness or never affiliated with the organization i want to know what you think about this this is crazy to me i'm surprised that tony morris wasn't disfellowshipped for his crazy alcoholism you're right you're right absolutely tony morris is a super alcoholic dude like really really bad and it was obvious he bought thousands of dollars worth of alcohol You know what? Let me just play the video since I'm thinking about it. So somebody filmed this in New Jersey. Tony Morris at the time, I believe, lived in Brooklyn, New York. So he would have had to have traveled through Manhattan all the way into New Jersey, I think is where this took place, to a liquor store there during a meeting. This happened at like 11 a.m. while most Jehovah's Witness church services were going on. So it seems obvious to me that he went to an area that he didn't want to be seen that he may not be recognized by the people around him, and most of the people that would recognize him would be in a meeting. And then this happens. Somebody did the numbers. That's Tony Morris there. I think that this added up to like seven or $800 worth of alcohol that's in his cart there or something like that. It's top shelf liquor. I think he noticed that the guy was staring at him. I, I see you're a fan of scotch. Do you know anything about Irish whiskey? Yeah. I'm not, not a lot. My wife likes it. Yeah, he says, not a lot. I mean, a little bit, you know. He knows all about it, I think. But he didn't want to give the impression that he was an alcoholic. Yeah. Jameson's always. Yeah. Um, pop off. I usually get, I usually get Bushnells, but I, you know, I don't know anything about these, you know, newer ones, you know. Yeah. The Jameson's been... Good, good long time. Yeah. This one I don't know. But hey, that's nice to just test them out, taste them. Yeah. Yeah, but I've been to Scotland All right. a number of times, so I just been to Scotland a number of times, he says. Well, well thank you. Scottish and Irish, so <laughs> <I'm not prejudiced. laughs> a lot of the Irish ones will say yeah. you gotta try our stuff, you know. Yeah. I know I've had the green spot. That's very nice. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I'll just I'll just go with hard. A, well, I'll just go with another bo- another bottle of Jamo. <laughs> you can't go wrong with it. My wife really likes that. Yeah, hey, have a good one. Yep. 
So anyway, that was like Bottlegate. That's the thing that kind of sparked it. Um, and it was fairly obvious that he knew way more about alcohol than any Jehovah's Witness should. Like, I don't have a problem with people who enjoy drinking. That's perfectly fine. I don't care. But I'm not out there preaching about how it's a sin to drink too much. You're not supposed to get tipsy even. You're supposed to drink maybe just enough so you feel it, just barely. Getting drunk is a sin, and you will die in Armageddon if you get drunk. That's basically the idea that they spread, that the governing body members spread. And here we have Tony Morris, governing body, or ex-governing body member now, talking about all this liquor. He's very obviously at least more of an alcoholic than he should be as a Jehovah's Witness. At least. I don't know if he's an alcoholic. He drinks more than he's supposed to. That's guaranteed. Dude, he bought all of that liquor. That's crazy. That is crazy, man. Drinking isn't a sin, but drunkenness is a sin. Right. Thank you, Jubilee Helix. Yeah, that's the way Jehovah's Witnesses view it. And knowing that much about alcohol, you cannot convince me the dude doesn't get drunk pretty frequently. Haha, is he just standing there admiring liquor? Yeah, it seemed like it. Like, what the hell is going on right now? I don't drink at all. I used to, but I don't know. I just don't like alcohol. I mean, feel free if you want to. It's just not for me. Anyway, thanks, Chan, man. That was a really interesting uh, point you brought up there. Yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm just blown away by this, and I'm fascinated to see where it goes from here.